All right, so we're going to cover a couple of things on this video. Um, one is what is quickly becoming one of my most favourite angle grinders, and the correct way to sharpen edge cutter flails. So we'll go quickly about my angle grinder first. Um, just bought this one down um, mainly because I wanted a guard of it, but it won't fit. But um, yeah, just to show you the difference in things I like. Now this is an Itachi hand grind. It's actually a 110 volt somebody want, somebody give me. Um, that's probably like 60, 70, 80 quid angle grinder. This is a work zone angle grinder from Audi, 20 quid. Now, this is why I just want to go through the difference of it. Um, start with the power on it. This expensive one, see there, uh, where are we? 750 watt. Um, this one, our cheap nasty one, supposedly, where are we? Uh, yeah, there we go, 1200 watt. So for a kickoff, it's a more powerful angle grinder, and it shows. Another thing, these switches. I hate these switches because when you hold it, you're holding it like that. See what I mean? Not, you know, you've not got a lot of leverage on it if it bites into something. It's, and nearly all angle grinders, modern ones, have that stupid switch on them that after a while won't stay switched on. So you've got to keep your hand on it. This one, you've got a similar switch to like a lot of the big angle grinders. Lift it up. Flip that up. You've got more control. You've got a big handle on the back. You can grip hold of it. So it, it's... You feel you've got control on, of it. You feel you've got it... Got a good solid grip on it. The other thing... Is this... Switch on the back. I'm not going to do this one-handed. But that alters the speed, so if you're just trying to gently nick some, nibble at something, you can turn it right down, nice and gently, or you're trying to be a bit aggressive on something, I won't turn it right up, do you see what I mean, it's, it's got a lot of stuff on there, at 20 quid that you don't get on that at sort of three four times the price and the other thing a lot of people were going to go on with a cheap hand grinder it won't last very long i've had quite an expensive jcb angle grinder um a couple of a cheap draper cheap McAllister one and they've all lasted about the same this work zone one this cheap one has outlasted them so, begs the question, why would you, what's the name, why would you buy the either Deere ones? Just because of the sake you want the decent name. So, shove that one over here, out of the way now. I'm going to have to try and set this up somehow in a minute. But yeah, basically when we talk about uh, sharpening your fails, because I've, I've seen plenty of people that do them wrong. Now when you sharpen your, fail, your flails on the edge cutter, this edge, you never touch. You can find a better flail to have a look at. That's a bit one. Yeah. Never ever sharpen that side of the hide. You always sharpen this side. And if you look at the top, the profile, I'm going to focus on that. You want to keep that angle as least as possible. So you don't want to sort of cut it try and grind it like that. You always want to try and grind like that to give yourself a nice sharp point. So just, I say I've done half of them, so I'll just do one quickly just to show you. Oh, do I do it? One thing I will say with this hand grind though is the guard on it is, for this type of work, isn't good. This is why it's been removed and yeah, it's not so handy. So yeah, we'll have a go on this now. So 
them. You see what we've achieved? Yes, there is still a few little nicks in that, but there's no scent. I mean, it is sharp. That's the point, keeping it sharp. And same, I mean, this, all right, these are competition flails, but this way of sharpening works on your tea, your competition, your tea flails, or things like that. So, yeah, that's about it. So, you see, that's one we haven't done yet. And that's our. Uh, I'll finish one. I say you're not trying to take mass of the metal. You just want to get a reasonably good edge back on them. And the other piece of advice I can offer that um, doing regularly. I mean, like if we're out all week with the edge cutters, we'd probably sharpen up probably twice a week. Just keeps keeps them sharp, keeps the hedges tidy. You know, you're not smashing them you're cutting them and the other point i was going to make yes the other point if you sharpen them regularly it's a quick job to do first thing in the morning if you leave until they get right blunt you can waste quite a bit of time just trying to get an edge back on them so yeah that's it that's what is at the moment my favorite small angle grinder and uh, how to maintain your you flails on the edge cutter.